Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released the first minor update to macOS Monterey 12.2.1. I'm gonna go over everything that you need to know about this update, along with some open core legacy patcher, unsupported Mac news. Let's jump in and get started. Apple released a 12.2.1 update on February 10th, 2022 at 12 o'clock noon Central Standard Time. They also released iOS 15.3.1, iPadOS 15.3.1, WatchOS 8.4.2. If you wanna be able to update to 12.2.1 all you need to do is go into system preferences click on software updates you should already see a one there that shows that an update is available when you click on it you should see macOS Monterey 12.2.1 you can click more info in case you have other updates in here to be able to install now if it's not showing up for you you can do a little trick you can click on advanced and then just click on ok and it'll make it check again and then it should pop up and show for you to be able to be installed how large is the 12.2.1 update well each version of the operating system is a different size due to Apple including all the fixes from the previous releases. So if you have 12.2 installed, the update's only going to be 1.1 gigabytes, and that's a pretty small update compared to previous updates for macOS Big Sur. Now if you have 12.1, it's going to be 1.9. Now if you're coming all the way back from 12.01, it's going to be 2.4 gigabytes. And if you, there's something wrong with your sealed snapshot on your machine, you'll see a full update size of 11.3 gigabytes. Or if you're running an open core legacy patch or unsupported Mac that has the root or volume patches installed for graphics acceleration, you're going to see the 11.3 gigabyte update and that's normal. How long does it take to install the 12.2.1 update? Well, I have been keeping track of that on this 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. It took seven minutes to do the second phase for preparing. The first phase was downloading. The second phase is preparing the update was seven minutes and then the actual installation part after the Mac restarted was 22 minutes for a total install time from start of the installation preparation to desktop desktop usable desktop was 29 minutes. Now I also took the time for 12.2 and it was 32 minutes so it was a little bit faster this time around. After the update completed, the build number was increased to 21D62 from the 12.2 update of 21D49. If you have a 2018 to 2020 Intel Mac, the T2 security chip has an OS called BridgeOS on there, and it's usually updated with different releases. With this release though, Apple did not increase the BridgeOS version, and it stayed the same as 12.2. Now this is not out of the ordinary. Normally Apple will only increase the BridgeOS version if there is a included fix that's really needed or it's a major release or 12.3 upcoming. Also for the M1 devices, Apple did not update the firmware for the 12.2.1 update. Apple did release a full installer of macOS Monterey 12.2.1 and that is used to create a USB installer or to update from Catalina or Big Sur and I always keep a download link to the install assistant package so you can get a direct download link to the full installer. Also Apple released a M1 IPSW restore file for M1 devices to be able to restore it in under 10 minutes with Apple Configurator 2 and all the previous versions are still signed unlike iOS when they sometimes unsign previous versions of iOS. So when I mentioned the minor update, and this is the first one for Mac OS Monterey, I'm talking about the dot release of the third character. So again, major releases would be 12.2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Minor releases would be 12.2.1, 12.2.2, for example. And when Apple does that, it's normally because it's an emergency fix, like a big security update uh, that needs to be pushed out, or if it's an OS-related issue that a lot of users are complaining about. And that's why this one was released. So you might seen me report on the 12.2 battery drain issue and what that was is that if you had a Intel Mac with a Bluetooth mouse keyboard or peripheral connected to the Mac and you put the Mac to sleep without power the battery would drain overnight so this is a pretty big issue and a lot of people were complaining about this issue and hoping that Apple released the fix or I mentioned that Apple fixed this in 12.3 beta 2 but many users were saying hey I don't want to have to wait a month and keep turning off my Bluetooth devices before Apple comes out with 12.3. So Apple did the right thing. They came out with 12.2.1 that fixes this issue and the battery drain no longer happens, which is really great for anybody who is experiencing that issue. So for security fixes, there's a pretty big one here. And on the Apple security updates page, you can see what they listed out for the update here. And one of the important things to mention is this is for WebKit for Safari. And when you see the impact here, impact processing and maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple is aware 
of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited already. So what that means is, is that there might be people out there already taking advantage of 12.1, 12.2 machines right now. That's why this is an important security update to fix and that addresses that issue in the new version of Safari. So when we talk about Safari, let's take a look at that in our test machine here. Now, as you can see here, the build version has increased to .8 from .5 from 12.2. They did not change the version of Safari to, for example, 15.3.1. It's still 15.3, so it might be a little confusing. Look at the build version, and that's where the change happened, and that's where the security fix was done. Now, let's talk about performance. And remember, whenever I run the Geekbench score here, I am expecting the numbers to be almost exactly the same. There shouldn't be any major changes in these minor point releases. I do them just in case there isn't something strange that happened in the update that might slow the system down or something like that. So for example, on the same device on 12.2, I have a 1750 for a single core and a 7705 for a multi-core. And when we looked at after we ran it with the 12.2.1 updates, 1753 and a 7762, so right on the dot. Now keep in mind, after the update is complete, there's a lot of background processes that have to run, for example, spotlight indexing. So I always let the Mac sit for a little bit and finish those processes before I run the Geekbench score. I also wanted to mention that Apple released a statement today talking about an update on AirTag unwanted tracking. So if that's important to you, I'll put a link in the description about that information that Apple released today. Now let's talk about some open core legacy patcher unsupported Mac news in Mac OS Monterey. As of this taping, the version of open core legacy patcher is still 0.4.2. It's very stable. If you are interested about that update, I put an update video talking about the 0.4.2 update and and I also always will update my personal test device before I ever recommend you updating your device. So this is an early 2013 MacBook Pro running OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.2 GUI version. Update to 12.2.1 was successful on this device. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the update for any of the unsupported Macs when you have to install the post install root patch will always be the 11 gigabyte full install. If you click this button that says no patches are needed for your machine, you will always get the Delta update, the smaller update. I also have not seen any reported issues from the community on the Discord chat with 12.2.1. Usually the developers and some of the testers are always jump in quickly like I do to test it out just to make sure nothing major breaks. And usually it doesn't on these dot releases and sometimes it does with major like 12.2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's really good news so far. And remember, if you're having any problems with the patcher or the updates with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, feel free to put them in the comments and we can give you a hand. Next, I wanted to talk about when to expect the 12.3 update. But before I get to that, I had a couple questions about what can you do if you're on 12.3 beta? Well, if you needed to get to 12.2.1, you would have to do an erase install for a proper downgrade. What I recommend you do is just wait a little bit until the final version of 12.3 comes out and then you can be on the production version. And what we're guessing is, is somewhere mid-March here. Usually the major releases like two, three, four, five come out within a month or a month and a half. And there's actually a rumored uh, Apple event somewhere around the second week of March. So I'm guessing either the second or the third week of March, we should see 12.3, but it could always drop earlier than that. But that's my guess on when 12.3 will be released. Should you install the 12.2.1 update? My recommendation is you should, especially for that Safari WebKit. And if you have macOS Catalina or macOS Big Sur, you will see a Safari update in your software update pane. I recommend updating it to the latest version of that Safari in your software update to protect you yourself against that security vulnerability. Now, one caveat, always make sure you run a time machine. Remember, iCloud is not a full backup solution. Always have a time machine a SSD is a cheap insurance with your data. Always back up your data before you perform an update. Again, 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to be just fine, but you don't want to be that one person that has a problem. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them into the comment section below. And also a, a huge shout out to all my Patreon members for supporting me. Thank you very much and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.